I mean, you could use it as a headscarf, but that's not really my thing. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Kelly, also known as Ro... Hello, welcome to my channel. <laughs> my name is Kelly, also known as Ro Ro and Kids. And this is a podcast all about what I've been knitting and designing over the last two weeks. This is episode 58. Huge welcome to everybody, new and returning. Thank you for being here. It has been two weeks, hasn't it, since I last saw you and I have been working on it for a bit actually and I've got a couple of almost really, really close to being finished objects. Uh, so I'm going to crack straight on and show you what I've been up to. So, first is my very, very so close, so close, like it's, you can smell it, how close it is is my lawn skin shawl by Hoi Locatelli. <laughs> okay, so it is cast off. It's no longer on the needles, but it's not finished because I've got to do all these tassels. That one's gone a bit awry, but whatever. Um, so I've got to do the tassels right along this peacoat edging. And there's a lot. So, I knitted this in um, a Skin and a Skitch club yarn um, from two years ago, which was the Ipatirs, or Ipatirs, I don't know how we pronounce the name at all, um, but it was a Titan colourway. Um, and it's this gorgeous cream with splashes of really dark chocolatey colours in there. Right, I am sorry, um, we were interrupted by kids and things again, so um, I can't remember what I was talking about. I think I was talking about the yarn, which was from Skein and the Stitch. So it was a one-off yarn and I accidentally bought a 100% um, merino yarn instead of a sock yarn. I had intended to use it for a certain sock. Um, <clears throat> so I decided to do lawn skein shawl instead. So I'll show you the pattern. First. So there's a lot of garter and then you get these like slip stitches um, with the yarn in front and then you get like a V shaped lace, you can see it better there. And then you do the slip stitches again and garter. Part of it has short rows in, this part has short rows and then the last section has short rows um, but it's a really weird shape so it's quite a fun knit um, because you are doing something all the time you, you're, doing, you're always increasing at, at either end um, and you are doing garter then you're doing the slip stitches then you're doing the lace and the lace is on both sides um, it's on the wrong side as well as the right side. Um, you are doing short rows. Like there's always something to do, but it's just not a very interesting pattern to look at, if that makes sense. So it's interesting to knit, but it's not the most interesting pattern. Now it does need a good block, but it's also really weird shapes. So I've got this lump like this. And I've seen her wear it and she has the tassels around, so this isn't the bottom. And obviously because of the short rows, you've got this long section and then it's not, oh, and then the lump and then it's not as long on this side, so the lump's not even in the centre. It's, it's odd, it's odd. Um, but I'm going to block it and see, well, there's no way that's blocking straight. Like it's, it's, it's that's not blocking straight. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, and the, the photos in the pattern, although they're very pretty, they really don't show the shawl that well. My personal opinions, obviously, but this is how it is. So anyway, the, I really like the edging, which is this Pico cast off. 
So you only did a pico every like 10 stitches or something, I can't remember now. Um, but then she gets you to put the tassels over the pico, so you're kind of covering those up. Um, she also didn't have a, t a pico right on the end, so I stuck one on. Um, so you stick, so I kind of, I'm not sure whether I'm liking the tassels better than the actual picos. The other option is to just put two tassels, um, one on either end. I only have this much yarn left. So I don't have a lot left and I don't know whether I've got enough to do tassels all the way across because I've still got a long way to go. Uh, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to do with that. I, I kind of like that but I think I like that more without them on. I don't know, I can't, I really can't decide. Anyway, it's off the needles. It was mostly knitted on a Friday night. But yeah, um, yeah, it was mostly knitted on Friday. So I did a reasonably good job. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, it'll keep me warm. But it doesn't fit very well either. <laughs> I think you can only wrap it once like that. It is in only one scheme though. So, you know. Um, see what it's like after blocking, because it might stretch out. But yes, there we go. So that is the um, Hoagie Locatelli one skein shawl. Um, I recommend the pattern for fun. It is a fun pattern. And she does, she has written it out and charted it. I actually found it easier to follow the written instructions this time around than the chart found the chart a little bit hard going um, and normally I do follow charts all the time I don't follow the written but I just I don't know I just found the written a little bit easier to sink in with this one um, yeah I don't think there's anything else I can say about it I will get it blocked and I'll show you again when it's blocked and, and I've made my decision on what I'm doing with this bottom I think I probably will I don't know. I'm going to say I probably will go with the tassels, but then uh, that's not true. I don't know. I honestly don't know what to pick yet. But yeah, the yarn is beautiful, but Jess's yarn is always beautiful. She's one of my favourite dyers. So that is that one. So my other finished object, I've kept it together just to show you guys but it's not properly um cast off well it is but i haven't cut the yarn and that is the triangle shawl that i was making to do the um yarn smith's lagoon dk review so this is the entire thing the yarn is still attached um but i only have this little bit so basically for this I just did a basic triangle. I started with three stitches and then I just increased with an eyelet um, at each side every other row. See the eyelets there, get rid of that. See the eyelets? Yes. Um, and I kept the stocking stitch seam up the front. I did random eyelet rows just to give a bit of interest, but I kept forgetting. That's why there isn't one near the top. Um, but unfortunately, it's my completely my fault because it was li literally no pattern. It was just for a yarn review. Um, it's too deep and not long enough, so it won't. I wanted it like this sort of thing, but it won't wrap around me, and it's too long. It's not what I wanted. So I am going to pull it out and do it again, but do the increases in the middle as well. And I might knock out this stock and stitch seam because I didn't really like the look of that. So um, I'm going to do that again, but I was waiting to show you guys before I pull it out. But I'm going to pull the whole thing out and, um, and then do it again, but increase in the centre as well as either side, just so it's wider and shallower. Um, you do... I did really like, I really like the yarn. 
um, I do have a yarn review on my channel for this yarn. Um, a couple of people asked about how it washes. So I have some of this. I have this left. So I'm going to knit a couple of swatches of this and then um, do some wash tests with it. Um, just store it in the washing machine every time I put a wash on, which is every day. <laughs> we are a family of four. And I'll do some wash tests with it and then I'll report back in a couple of weeks about that. But yeah, so this is actually going to be frogged completely um, and then restarted. But it literally took me three days to knit this. So I'm not worried about doing that. Um, it's just a shame that it's just yeah it's not it's just not really usable i mean you could use it as a headscarf but that's not really my thing and you could probably use it as a shawl like that but again it's just not really my thing so um i'm gonna pull it out into something that i will use so that is finished object number two that's it for finished objects. Well, the, I, I don't suppose you could say that the the loan skill loan the lawn skill. Oh my! The lawn skein shawl. You can't really say that that is finished because it's not. I've still got bits and bobs to do on it. But you know what I mean. It's practically done. So moving on, uh, we now have my poker cats. So, I've said before the polka cats cotton is quite vague in parts. Um, I when I've oh, right okay. So I've finished the body, um, but I'm at the hem, and the hem has a different colour. Um, so originally i'm going to pop a little video in what i filmed before i pulled it out so you can see but originally i thought if i did um the next the next two colors in the sequence because i haven't got all 24 in so if i did the next two colors in the sequence which i think was 22 and 23 as the bottom hem that would look nice but when i started doing it i didn't really like it so i pulled it out last night i'll pop the video in so you can see I'm just going to slot this in um, to the podcast because I want to get on with my poker cats, but I want to show you what I was doing. So I did decide to use colour number 23 and I was going to be 24 on the end for the hem, but when I started knitting it, I didn't like it. Um, so I'm going to change to this. Hopefully I like that. If I don't, I'm just going to do main colour and not have a different coloured hem but we'll see what happens but yeah I wanted to show you that um, so you know why I pulled it out so yeah I pulled that out last night because I just I just wasn't feeling it and I started using this which is a drops I can't remember if it's Nord or Flora um, this is this is Nord the, the main colour and drops and uh, Nord and Flora are really similar. It's just the Nord has a polyamide in it, which makes it slightly softer for my hands. The Flora doesn't. The Flora is just wool and alpaca. The Nord has wool, alpaca, polyamide. I don't know the percentages, but I can't remember if this is Flora or Nord. I think it's Flora though. Um, I know it's the amethyst colourway, and it's just what I had left over from um, the Twist and Turn shawl. The M. Cal from Stephen West 2022, I think. Um, I really like the colour, but I'm still not sure if I like it on this. So you basically just switch out to a different colour. But I'm just not sure. And part of me is just thinking, just do main colour. And maybe that's boring of me. I don't know, but I'm just not feeling it. I just think it's like quite a bold 
stripe all of a sudden. I don't know. I don't know. My heart is really saying, please go back to main colour. So I tried the last couple of truly hook colours and that didn't work for me. And then I've tried this and it's just not working for me. I kind of like it in the in the project pictures when you see them online. I like that they've got different colour neckband. Um, so maybe I'll do it for the neckband, but I'm t I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it should just be main colour. Um, I think because it break it stops the rainbow. I think maybe that's it. I don't know I don't know I also think that it's gonna be huge like huge Um, when I took it off the needles last night to pull it out it just looks so wide in the body I did I have done a fit check and it is very loose and she says that it should have I think it's 10 centimeters ease but I feel like mine's got like 20 and it is just absolutely massive Um, and I'm worried about when I block it feel like it might get really really big and if that happens I'm going to be devastated because it's been a lot of work and I've obviously I have enjoyed making it <sighs> but that's not to say I want to make it again um if I did make it again I would make a lot of changes um and I would probably go down about four sizes but I don't know. I'll have to see. But it is. It's really. It's really big. It's already really big, and um, it's not blocked yet. But I will get back to you. I'll let you know how it goes. But as it stands, I have a rainbow polka cat, and I am. Um, I love it. I do love it. I love how it looks. Show you them cats. Um. But I'm just, I don't know, I'm just worried. So there we go. So I'm almost done. I've got that hem to do. I've got the sleeves to finish. They're only going to be short sleeves. And then I've got this neck to do. This neck seems incredibly wide as well. So there's a lot going on with it that I'm like, oh, I'm not overjoyed. The only thing I'm overjoyed with is the pattern and the colour. The actual, like the pattern is in the cats and the colour, the actual um, size and where things are panning out. I'm like, mm. I don't really like the pattern itself. The pattern itself is... <sighs> I'm not going to say it's not great because it is. She's put extensive work into it. There's so many charts. And obviously it's for a, a sweater, which is what I've done, a cardigan or a steeped cardigan. Like there's a lot of work gone in. It's just major aspects are missing. So hopefully I'll have poker cats finished the next time you see me. Fingers crossed. Although I do have a lot of things I have to knit. Um, Another thing I've been working on is these dispersion mittens, which is a design by me. Um, I'd finished the fingerless gloves. Um, I have finished one mitten and I'm still working on the other one. I kept getting the tip of this one wrong because I hadn't written down the tip of this one correctly. And I kept getting this one wrong. I had to pull it out about four times. So I kind of started to hate it a little bit. <laughs> um, it is now done. Uh, but I still have to do the thumb. So once the thumb's done, they're, they're completed. I can do a Macaulay. They're done once the thumb is done. I have to get the pattern written up. This pattern was supposed to be released in April and we're on the 12th of April today. So that isn't happening because they've got to get into testing. I'm just really, really behind on them. Um, the two weeks with the kids being off has been incredibly difficult to do anything, really. Um, this has been... Normally I can still do stuff, but for some reason I just haven't. I think we've had illness and just a lot going on, I think. And 
it's just really slowed me down with things so which is unfortunate but i will pick back up again so yes dispersion mittens almost almost finished i just need to do that thumb these have been knitted in skein and the stitch um dk yarn and we have the pink is garden graffiti and the green is ivy it's a beautiful green i love it and then finally it's a quick one isn't it i finally finished my where are you oh you've got a needle stuck in you oh you've got two needles stuck in you oh my goodness oh you're being manhandled right i finished a nest sock Woo! so these are the nest socks by katie katie herod of songbird handmade that was a mouthful today um, and they are, I did the cuff down, so the comb, cuff down, toe up, um, and they're also in DK or four ply. So I did the cuff down in four ply, so the top is just uh, one by one rib and stock and stitch bottom. It has a shadow wrap heel, which is a lovely heel, and then I was calling it fisherman's rib, but everyone keeps saying it's half fisherman's rib. So it's half fisherman's rib apparently and then a ribbed top um, they are long and they kind of sit all slouched i really like them um, but they have taken me forever um, i think it's it's purely because i'm really slow at doing one by one rib like it just kills me so the leg took me an absolute age and then um and then the foot was not fast either but that's that's me it's all me because i'm really slow at rib i have cast on the second one um i cast that on on a friday night so i didn't do much i'm slow anyway without having the rum in my tummy and i'm knitting it in um enchanted yarns pixie dust which is no longer available i'm afraid it's a beautiful yarn. Um, it's a BFL yarn. So, yeah, BFL socks. It's BFL and nylon. So one down, one to go. I am not under any illusion that this will be ready anytime soon. But I am going to just pick it up and plod through it over the next few months. I'm not going to be able to wear them over summer anyway. So um, I want them for, like, autumn time. So that is my plan. I'm just going to plod on with them um, and try and get them done for the autumn sort of time. That is it. That's all I've been working on. So we'll go on to acquisitions. So it was my birthday on Monday the 8th of April and um, I got some lovely presents. Are you only got yarn off one person though because I don't my family and well my family don't buy me yarn it's just they just don't um but I got like some clothes and money I use the money to buy yarn <laughs> um, I got clothes and money and some rum and a necklace and Terry got me a little mini printer for printing Etsy shipping labels. My brain has stopped working, um, which I wanted for edges. So I, I got some lovely things. Um, but my wonderful friend Ange um, sent me a parcel and I, I, I got it a good few days before my birthday, but I was a good girl and I kept it shut. And then uh, when I finally opened it, I was blown away. So she, I'm going to show you what's inside first. So she got me this cute little um, 
thing for post-it notes. It's come, I need to glue it back in because it's come apart, but it's, um, has post-it notes in, show you that properly, and it's this cute little, like you just fasten the little button and you can carry your post-it notes with you wherever you go. Love that. I got a hug in a mug, which has got tea and some biscuit biscuits in, which I absolutely love, biscoff. And I think that's English breakfast tea, which I also love. I got some pixie dust flavoured um, wax melts. She got me this gorgeous little plaque, which I'm going to hang up. So in case you couldn't read that, it says, thank you for being such an important piece of my story. Isn't that lovely? And then she got me this gorgeous project bag. With little owls on. It says, handmade with love on the label. Um, I think it's just, yeah, it's just, um, is that gingham that called, that fabric? inside beautiful i love that she got me this beautiful skein which is the sea glass colorway by ripple crafts it's a hundred percent blue face lester how lush is that and she knitted me a bag she knitted me a bag look at this how lush is that so she it's a double double knit bag there's two see now so it's a big bag she's knitted all of that I, I was with her in a calf a few months back and she was knitting herself one of these and I was saying oh I like your back and then when she finished it it's amazing I absolutely love it when she finished it um I knew she'd finished it because she put in the discord our discord that she'd finished the bag and then um when I unwrapped and I seen this I was like I can't believe you've given me your bag and she said no I haven't and then she sent me a picture of her bag, which is a bit more, there's more colours on the outside of her bag. It's a bit more pink, pinkies in there. Um, and she showed me her bag. And then she said, as soon as I'd finished, like as soon as she'd finished her bag, she cast this one on and made me one. I am such a lucky girl to have such an amazing friend. So when you see me out and about with me bag, you can go, oh, is that the bag Ange made you? So, yes, spoilt. Love that yarn. Love the project, but I love everything. Now, I've showed you, I can have my cup of tea and eat my biscuits. <laughs> so, I'm going to put them all back in here so I know where they are. So, that is it for acquisitions as well, I think. I don't think I've got anything else. So, um i want to say a big welcome to our latest patreon which is Anne. thank you so much for joining us Anne. i hope you're enjoying enjoying it all so far and um, patrons this month are voting for what i'm designing next so they have a choice between um a sock that i started a few months ago and just abandoned because i didn't have time um and also an old hat that needs to be re-released so they're currently voting on that um, they also completed the vote for what yarn I'm going to use for my next design which is Athenaeum gloves um, they also voted on what I was going to be designing Athenaeum gloves did actually win it was very close but it did actually win so I'll be doing some Athenaeum gloves and we have chosen the yarn for that which I'll show you next time um, and patrons also now get all my videos ad free so um 
for basically as little as £2.50 a month you don't have to watch the adverts on my videos. Um, I know a few people don't like that I have adverts on videos but unfortunately I have to make a living and that's how YouTube pay me. So they will be on there, they will be staying on there but you can have them taken off by either paying YouTube for a premium or um, if you just you just bothered about mine you can pop along and join my Patreon and you get other stuff as well for joining the Patreon not just ad free videos there's lots of other things going on so yes so welcome Anne it's lovely to have you and um, and anyone else who would like to join you will be appreciated endlessly um right so I think that's it for this episode which is quite a short one yeah I don't think I have anything else to tell you I've got any life stuff to tell you oh yes I went for my birthday so me and Terry actually went out we hadn't been out for a meal since my birthday the year before um because he finds it very difficult but he's really really working on himself this year and he's got himself a motorbike and um I don't know whether I've said already but the car is very um, claustrophobic for him and it, it makes things difficult. Um, Terry's, Terry's problems lie with getting to places, it's not actually once he's there. Like a lot of people say like, oh, oh he's going into a busy place and things like that, that doesn't bother him at all. It's not um, crowded places or anything like that, it's just getting to places and getting back home and knowing once he's got to the place it's keeping out of his mind that he's got to travel back to get home so that is his main issue and he finds the car very claustrophobic and he's basically had major panic attacks in the car and it's a horrible place to have a panic attack and therefore he's now wary of getting in the car in case that happens again so he said about getting a motorbike um, and then he can follow behind me um, in the car and he would be able to go places and it's really helped and he hasn't gone out on it much because we've had nothing but rain um, for weeks on end so he hasn't been able to get he's only been out on it twice since getting it um, we've only had it since March so it's not like but we did manage to go out for my birthday so we went for a meal just 10 minutes down the road we did have to go in the car we went 10 minutes down the road we stayed in a hotel that was 10 minutes down the road which sounds ridiculous but it was just to get us out of the house and do something different and also just to because we used to do that a lot we used because we live in a little village there's nothing really here so we used to go to different towns and stay in a hotel there and, and have a night out in the towns we haven't been able to do that so we were like if we just go to our local um chain hotel um it's like that it's a step and then we'll try and go further afield next time so that's what we're going to do so we did we went to 10 minutes down the road to the hotel we had a meal out um we stayed in the hotel it was so nice so nice it just felt like we were away even though we were literally a stone's throw from the house but we just felt like we were away and it was just lovely we didn't want to go home the next day we wanted to stay another night um but yeah it was just really nice and it was a really lovely birthday um so since then well that was only two two three days ago we got back on the tuesday but he's like he's raring to go he's wanting another he's wanting another night out and he's wanting to do it again next month go to the next town so it's going well it's going well may long may it last he's still getting pooly but it's just he's not letting it get on top of him so that's good so that's it the kids go back to school on monday they are bored out their heads they need to be back and i need them back I need to catch up with some work. I really do. <laughs> I'm so behind. I'm going to try and write up a pattern this afternoon for those gloves. Yeah, but that's pretty much all that's gone on. We haven't really done anything. The, the weather's just been so rubbish. They're off for two weeks, but it's just non-stop rain. So it's, you can't really do anything. 
so I'm hoping spring turns up, but the neighbours told Terry yesterday that apparently we're due for more snow. I won't be happy, I'm telling you now. I'll be miserable. I'll be coming on the podcast going, who cares what I knit? <laughs> anyway, thank you for all the lovely comments last week about me saying, about the people who were saying that I talk too much and the rest of you saying that I didn't. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and, um, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully what? I don't know. Just thank you. Thank you for being nice to me, because some people can be mean. <laughs> so, right, um, I will see you in, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. And uh, hopefully Polka Dots is finished and I've decided, I've decided on the tassels, yay or nay, and blocked the lawn skin shawl too. And I can show you it on and see if it actually fits a bit better. Right. I'll see you soon.